Hi everyone, it's Brian MacDonald, author of Practical Stress Analysis with Final Elements here and uh, welcome to the first of our ANSYS Workbench Tips video. Um, so the idea of these videos is that they're, they're, they're fairly short and to the point and just show you how to um, do something in Workbench or give you some tips for um, using ANSYS Workbench. So today we're going to be concentrating on user-defined results, how we how we make user-defined results in Workbench, and we're going to use as an example hydrostatic stress. Okay, so by ways of, of example, I'm going to use a, a simple model that I made in Workbench, which is really just a tapered bar with a um, hole going through it. So you can see here, I've already built my model. Um, I have assigned materials to it. I've assigned a mesh to it, um, and I have put a fixed support on this face here, this back face, and I have put a force on the other end, um, in this case a force of 1000 newtons acting vertically downwards. So again I've tried to define a fairly regular simple mesh here. Um, I've solved my model and I've worked out my, my total deformation. Um, and also I've defined, looked at some other results, I've looked at maximum principal stress, middle principal stress, minimum principal stress, and I've also looked at the normal stresses in the three different directions, so SX, SY, SZ, and I've also um, calculated the equivalent stress. So sometimes something we're asked to look at is the hydrostatic stress or hydrostatic pressure. So hydrostatic stress is simply the three principal stresses added together and divided by three, or alternatively, the three stresses in the three different directions um, added together and divided by three. So it's kind of like an average stress that, that's often used. Um, it's it's very, very useful in some certain problems, certain particular problems. Uh, what we're looking at here is just a trivial example just to, to allow us to actually calculate it and, and work out how to calculate it in Workbench. So now that we know what hydrostatic stress is, you, you know your first port of call usually with Workbench is to uh, right click on solution and go insert and look for a new result and we would expect to find another stress. And you can see here that we have von Mises stress and we have the three principal stresses. We have shear, we have intensity, we've got normal stresses and shear stresses in all the directions and a few other bits and pieces here, but we don't have hydrostatic stress. And if, if you go and look through all the other um, options here, you will find that you can't find hydrostatic stress in there. Sometimes <clears throat> it is possible to find other results that aren't shown in the list here. And these are often accessed via the worksheet. So if we make sure that we, we left click on solution and come up here to worksheet, um, we can see all available um, solution quantities. You can see that there's these are all the results we can get from the model. Now, not all of these are accessible through um, the menus over here or through the icons. Um, so you will see the, the, the first ones that's given here are the ones that are accessible. So deformation in the three different directions, the sum of deformation deformation vectors, stresses in the three different directions, um, shear stresses, principal stresses, stress intensity, von Mises stress, max shear stress, and strains, and so on. So the, mostly these are the ones that are accessible, but you know, without going through all these, there are some that aren't accessible that we can actually get to. And how we can get to those is we can um, define them as a user-defined result. So if we were looking to do something really simply, so let's say for example, um, for whatever reason, um, let's say our stress intensity wasn't available. When in fact it actually is, just, just, just show that. If we go over here, we can go stress and there's stress intensity there. But suppose it wasn't there, what we can actually do is we could click on it here and we can right click, we can go create user-defined result. And you'll see over here stress intensity has turned up and what we can then do is ask it to evaluate that result and we can now get a plot of stress intensity okay which that's a kind of a trivial example because it's already there so let's just get rid of that so i'm just going to delete that um and again if we just go and look at our worksheet again briefly here it gives us an expression for each of the stresses um or sorry the results that can be calculated or obtained from the solution and what we can do is we can put those expressions into the user-defined result and we can uh, manipulate them however we want. We can add them together, we can multiply them, we can divide them and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to define um, our own hydrostatic stress here. 
So we're going to so if we're, we're going to do it via the three principal stresses. Notice the expression for them is S1, S2, and S3. Okay, and again, just recalling that our um, hydrostatic stress is S1 plus S2 plus S3 divided by three. So again, here we can hydrostatic stress is defined as the three principal stresses divided by three. So in our case, it could be S1 plus S2 plus S3 divided by three. So back in Workbench then, we're going to go to Solution. Uh, we're going to right click on Solution and we're going to go Insert User Defined Result. Okay, so here's our user defined result here. And the first thing here is it says, you can see how in yellow is the expression. It says, well, what do you want this user defined result to be? So what we want it to be is, we want it to be, I'm going to put a bracket in S1 plus S2 plus S3 and we're going to divide that by 3. Okay, so we've bracket S1 plus S2 plus S3 bracket um, slash 3. So slash is the division sign. So if I hit enter on that, it will calculate it. So again, it's it's a good practice to give that a name. So in this case, I'm going to rename that and call it hydrostatic stress. Okay, so now I can evaluate that. Okay, so now there's my hydrostatic stress. Okay, and again, you can see just up here, just in case you want to be sure, it says the expression is S1 plus S2 plus S3 divided by 3. Um, what I could do just to prove that it doesn't matter if you use the principal stresses or directional stresses is I'm going to define another user-defined result. And this time I'm going to say SX plus, plus SY plus SZ divided by 3. Okay, and I'm going to call this one hydrostatic stress number two. So let's rename that. And again, I can evaluate that and hopefully that should be the same as the other result. So we've got max of 3.7892 and a minimum of minus 3.73. And if we just look at the other one, again, the results haven't changed. So it's exactly the same. So that just proves that it doesn't matter if I use the principal stresses or directional stresses, the hydrostatic stress is exactly the same. Okay, so that's a very uh, quick introduction to user-defined results in um, ANSYS Workbench using hydrostatic stress as an example. So as always, if you're interested in learning more about finite element analysis, um, I would encourage you to buy my book, Practical Stress Analysis of Finite Elements. Now it's the third edition, so available from Amazon, all good online retailers. I'll provide a link in the description below. So it's um, the best textbook as an introduction to finite element analysis. Okay, so see you next time.